The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. If the military knows or has reason to know that Obama is not legitimate, I, I'm not quite sure why they're just sitting and, and following his orders. And um, it, it is leading to a constitutional crisis, not, not just on their shoulders, but on the shoulders of many who have allowed this to go, uh, to go on the way it has. Um, the other article you referenced was, um, you know, I don't write editorials that often. I like to save that space for my editorial contributors. And uh, so I, I don't like to usurp that space to use a word. Uh, but last night, I, I had it on my list of things to write about a letter that was sent to Jay Carney. It was hand-delivered, actually, and it was signed by 39 mainstream news agencies, Bloomberg, ABC, NBC, CBS, all of those, and many others, Associated Press. And they, in the letter, they were complaining that they don't have access to Obama in the course of his duties. And uh, they did call him the president. They said the president, not Obama, but you knew who they meant. And they complained that uh, this brings on constitutional issues Issues. Uh, it essentially raises the issues of whether or not uh, they are allowed to fulfill their constitutional duty of freedom of the press and reporting to the people. And so I read that. I read it Sunday night, and I let this sort of um, kind of matriculate through my mind. And then last night I said, I've, I've got to write this. And I normally we would have done a news article on it, but I decided to make it an editorial, which means it's opinion, and you can put emotion into it and things like that, things that you feel, rather than just the straight factual, you know, present the facts and let the readers decide. So um, I wrote, which I, I think it's a fairly excoriating letter to members of the mainstream media, and I asked them, you know, how dare you uh, ask what's happened to your First Amendment right now to have access to Obama? Yes, absolutely, you should be able to use photographs. In other words, they, the White House has been supplying these poised, coiffed, uh, you know, uh, approved uh, uh, photos of what Obama has been doing, and what they're saying is they need to get in there and photograph him candidly. And yes, absolutely, that's, that's the job of the press. But uh, my, my reaction to that was, where were you five years ago when everyone wondered where this guy came from? Oh, well, he's from Chicago. Oh, well, he's from Hawaii. Well, he's from Kenya. He's from Indonesia. He's from, we don't know where he's from. Uh, and not just that, but things about his background, things about his, um, his time in Chicago, his relationship with Bill Ayers. None of this was allowed to come out, nor was it allowed to, to come out during 2012, and there was absolutely no excuse because the cold case posse had already had two press conferences and had made it very clear what they found. So my feeling, my reaction to this was there's absolutely no excuse for what the media did, and as far as I'm concerned, they're criminally complicit. In, in allowing a usurper, some kind of a foreign-born domestic enemy, whoever he is, we don't, we don't even know what his real name is, they are responsible for allowing this to happen. So they need to do some mea culpas before they start complaining that their First Amendment rights have been trampled because the rights of every single American have been trampled by having an ineligible usurper in the office of the presidency, and they are largely to blame for that. They're complicit. I hold them responsible for what they're doing. Absolutely. I'm going to hold them responsible because what they're doing is a major cover-up. They're giving the administration in whole a pass at everything. Everything from Benghazi. I know we never go off subject here. From Benghazi to IRS gate to Fast and Furious to this gate. He didn't hear the president. He never hears anything till Friday afternoon when he reads it in the paper. Never. He never. He never hears anything at all until it, the news media releases it. Well, I mean, what's his business. job? That you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. There, I, there you go. There's an example. It's never his fault. They're protecting him. They're, 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 they're covering up for him all the time. And you know what, Sharon? It's pretty obvious to everybody. They're making fools out of themselves. Who do they think they're fooling? That's why we're taking charge. The American people are taking charge, and we're not taking no for an answer. 
Go ahead, Sharon. I didn't want to stop you. I have about five more. No, minutes. no, that's, you're exactly right. Uh, I hold them completely responsible. And Obama, is he's never been responsible for anything. Uh, I don't think he could balance a checkbook if somebody put one in front of him. I, I don't even know if he can add. Uh, he's terribly incompetent, even if it turns out that he's constitutionally eligible as a natural born citizen because let's say he's lied about his background or something and you know he was born somewhere in the heartland to two US citizen parents maybe that he doesn't want us to know about even given that he's completely inept incompetent and he's a liar and the whole country knows he's a liar everybody knows he's a liar now I was reading before I called uh, there's another case of a little six-year-old girl with cancer who's lost her ability to get treatments because her family lost their plan and the next most affordable plan and it's not affordable for this family is another five hundred dollars a month what was wrong with the plan that was covering her treatments seriously ill people are in peril of, of something horrible happening and we know what that is because of this ridiculous and, and deadly Obamacare law he knows it's deadly and the Democrats I think know that it's deadly and I'll say something else I listened to several hours this afternoon or yeah this afternoon well, going into the, the afternoon of the House Judiciary Committee, they held a hearing that I had not known about. I hadn't seen this in the news, and this is another shortcoming. Where's the mainstream media reporting on all the committee meetings that are going on in Congress? Because there are some, they're always every day. But this one was a hearing on presidential overreach, uh, executive branch overreach, uh, when is it too much? And they had four testifiers there. Three of them were in essential agreement with one another, and one of them agreed with everything Obama did. And when the Democrats had their chance to speak, they asked this one guy, you know, basically to bolster what they believed and what they wanted to hear. The uh, Republicans, and I'm not defending anyone, and I don't like party politics because there's enough blame to go around everywhere, but the Republicans asked all four of them questions, and I will tell you that the, the impeachment, the I word impeachment came up a minimum of three times. And I believe that this could be, I have good reason to believe that this could be a prelude uh, to something that happens next month. Um, I do think that the uh, members of at least the House are starting to see the light. I think they are realizing that we cannot go on, this country cannot survive with Obama in office doing what he's doing, taking people's health care and treatment away and causing people to go destitute. <coughs> Uh, it, this is outrageous, and I do think that something is stirring here. That was the feeling that I got when we were there. They're getting tired. Um, um, they're looking at other ways. Um, everybody keeps saying impeachment. Well, that could lead to impeachment. Or we're focused on the forced documents. Uh, I believe that everybody's starting to get hit in the pocketbook and or wallet, so that's making people get up and go a little bit faster. Um, with that committee that you just said, I am aware of it. I, I think that there is something happening there. I'm going to like to say, I'm, I like to think that with our kids, we gave a little boost there. Uh, I know it worked. And I want to say something too, Sean. When we went in there, we did not care if you had an R or a D before your name. We went in there and gave presentations, and we gave them politely. We had no um, idea what to expect. I'll tell you, Sharon. I, I was surprised. I'm going to admit it. When you hear all these stories on mainstream media about this congressman, that congressman, this one's kicking his feet, acting stupid, they were polite. Everyone that we dealt with, a little grumpy, some were a little grumpy, but they were still polite. And we had several appointments and a lot we didn't have. We just knocked on a door like a traveling salesman. They welcomed us. They sat us down. They offered us something to drink. They gave us a room and space. They told us, if we had 15 minutes or seven minutes, or if we had a half hour, they gave us that time. They have that a lot of time. They were warm. They listened to us. A lot of them at the beginning were like, "Oh, here we go with that birth issue," and they came a particular point in the presentation when the tie changed and they started faking. And uh, I'll go into that a little bit later on in the show. What I thought was the turning point. If you look at my website. I took a lot of pictures of me giving the presentation with my crummy old laptop. Yep, on that website is my crummy old laptop. Why did I use my crummy old laptop? 
because every time I turn it on and hit the play button, it works. I was afraid of another laptop I had used before earlier, a newer one that didn't work. And you can see people watching the presentation with me, aides, chief of staff, etc., standing there. We got the proof right there. It's like you being in the office. And they were receptive after we got the presentation rolling and we made them feel more at ease because we were watching it together. Most of the pictures I took of the Sheriff Joe News Conference, when they saw that, they said, we had no idea. So maybe they all living in a bubble and we educated them. Sharon, any closing thoughts? I have a lot of people on the show tonight. We're going to go over um, who saw what, what kits. I have Ellen holding from California patiently and Jeff from PA. Well, that's wonderful, and I look forward to hearing all of those people and, and you address all of those uh, interesting aspects of your trip, and I think it's great that you made it. Um, what I can say is I do think that the tide is turning. I think that members of Congress, maybe not all, but I, I think probably for the last six months, even a year, they have seen what's been happening. And now particularly with the Obamacare rollout, what's really unfortunate is that it's taken this. It's taken children with cancer losing their ability to get their treatments for people to wake up and say, this is not a good idea. And then we have Obama going around on his blitz. Uh, to young people and trying to get them to sign up and saying, oh, well, you know, uh, it's not going to be repealed as long as I'm president. Well, you know, maybe there's a reason why he's saying that. I don't think he's going to be in the Oval Office much longer. And that could even be a year. That could be uh, after the November elections in 2014. I hope it doesn't get to that point where it's so political that that's what we have to do. But, but I think he knows that he's made some very serious missteps. And at this point, it has nothing even to do with constitutional eligibility, although that's paramount. But now what we're looking at is lying to the very people he is supposed to be serving and who pay his salary. And if this republic is going to stand, we can't have that. And we won't have it, I don't think, much longer. I, I think he's going to be forced to resign. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.